How would you feel if you were born into a family of robbers? Would you run away or would you embrace the lifestyle and go a thieving yourself? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from The Bottled Imp. Exploring the realms of fantasy. <laughs> My name is Ken Boyter and today we are taking a look at Ronja, the robber's daughter. And that is written by Swedish author Astrid Lindgren. Now this was first published way back in 1981, but as far as I can tell it's always been in print. And Astrid was also responsible for Pippi Longstocking. She's probably more known for that in this country. But she is, as of January 2017, the 18th most translated author in the world. So she's obviously doing something right. Or is she? Let's find out. <laughs> Ronya, the robber's daughter. What's it all about? What's the setup? Well, it's quite a simple setup. As you can imagine from the title, there's a girl called Ronya and the book starts with her birth and she is born into a family of robbers and they have a very special hideout it is a keep it's, it's pretty much a big castle some of it is ruined some of it isn't so obviously they live in the non-ruined part and it seems to be fairly big it's got dungeons and it's got lots of rooms that they don't use but of course it does have a big hall that they all the robbers drink and be merry at in the evenings and the plot concerns Ronya, though. The focus is on her. And what happens is there is a rival gang, and that's led by Borka. He's the chief of that gang. And so there's a rivalry between Matt, which is Ronya's father. He's the chief and chieftain of that robber's gang. And so you have this rivalry that keeps flitting around all through the novel. But of course, as I said, the focus is on Ronya. And she stumbles across, I'm not, I don't want to give any spoilers away, she stumbles across Burke, who is the son of the rival chieftain. So, of course, they naturally should be rivals. After all, Matt, Ronya's father, has always banging on about how Borka should leave the forest and leave them to do all the robbing and he hates them. So consequently, Ronya has grown up with that, always that opinion. So when she comes across this book, she decides, well, actually, I hate you. So there's kind of just this inbuilt rivalry between the two of them. So that's pretty much the setup. It's also about her exploration about her surroundings. So as a child, she's pretty much left to her own devices. She can go off and explore. So she, at first, she explores the keep and what you know, what what it's like living in a castle. And you know, as a kid, any any dark passage is exciting. Any new room is obviously going to be exciting, and your imagination can kick in. And then she starts exploring the forest. So it's also the plot comes from her exploration as well. Now again, I'm not going to give any spoilers. There are lots of themes that run through all of this as well. And what, like I say, one of the themes is it's a coming of age story. I think ultimately that's what this book is about, about growing pains, about growing up. And so consequently, it's about finding out who you are and where you fit within your society. In this case, it just happens to be that she's part of a robber's gang. And that's quite interesting because as she learns slowly more and more about who she is in context with her family, she actually decides, you know what, well, I'm not sure about this thieving malarkey. I don't think I agree with it. So therefore that then raises another issue of nature nurture. So how much as a person do you develop? How much of that is your surroundings and the people that are influencing you, like your mother and your father and if you've got any siblings, and consequently your peers. So she's, you know, she, they've got a, a, a clan of robbers that she lives with as well. So obviously they're gonna be influencing her and the way she thinks. But then it's how much is actually you? How much are we born with, you know, our personalities? Can we resist what we're being taught? And I think everybody goes through a phase of rebelling and I think that's healthy because you have to start questioning your environment. So you have that, you know, juxtaposition of she wants to fit in, yet she's sort of going, well, I don't really 
a kind of agree with stealing things. But then it, it, her mind flips between not liking it and liking it because, well, how else are we going to eat? How else are we actually going to survive? And that's another theme, actually, survival. Because they are robbers, they're outside of society. And so they have to forage in the woods. They have to, you know, they rob as well. And Ronya is left to her own devices, as I say. And I think that's a beautiful touch because she's, she's allowed to go and explore the forest. And again, I'm not going to be spoilers, but there's certain dangerous situations that she finds herself in where she has to use her wits. She has to be, you know, have survival skills. And therefore, consequently, that teaches her independence and free thinking and how to think around problems. And there is, a, I'll do a little bit of a plot spoiler, but, but on a, a couple of occasions, Burke actually rescues her and, and helps her out. Consequently, she also rescues him, so he's not sexist in that respect. It's just, I guess, it was a way to get them to, to try and be friends. And that's another theme, friendship. So from going to hating somebody because you're kind of conditioned, because it's, of course, well, you're one of their robbers, so instantly I hate you, to actually, when I get to know you and chat to you and find out who you really are, I actually quite like you. <laughs> so that's what they discover. They actually really like each other. And they, they, they really, I guess, it, and it, it is a love, but it's an innocent love because they are about seven or eight when all this happens. So it's not a sexual love. It's not necessarily a romantic love, but it's a sweet, innocent uh, childhood love, which is just as strong and just as profound because they really fiercely are friends. You know, they... they, they start to hang out with each other, they, you know, like spending time and they discover more woodland together and they have, you know, a few perils together. And their friendship is really strong. So the theme of friendship is explored, but also the theme of testing friendship is explored because there are things that happen through sometimes through misunderstanding, sometimes through one of their being one of them being stubborn. And so you actually have to then re-examine your friendship with somebody every now and again because it's like, oh okay okay this is new I didn't really think you know believe that they would believe that or there's been a misunderstanding and so again you have to dig deep about well how much does this friendship mean to me and consequently they do actually start calling each other brother mine and sister mine so they genuinely believe they're brother and sister you know they, they have that connection they have that bond and ultimately it's that bond that is more important than anything else than any silly misunderstanding but it's a lesson learned. There's some beautiful lessons that Ronya actually learns from all of this. There's other themes such as, well, as I say, survival and the independence factor as well. But there's also relationships. The relationships between, you know, when you grow up, I guess your first relationships are with your parents or your guardians, whoever's bringing you up. And so there, that's going to have a big impact on what you are as a person and who you are as a person and, and your outlook. And I love the relationship that she has with her parents because her mother, Lovis, she's just a very warm, very motherly, very skilled in, in healing and, you know, has very wise knowledge. She obviously, this is a med medieval fantasy type setting. She, I guess, I don't know, is this sexist? No, this is just the way it is. She looks after the, the robbers, she cooks, she cleans, she runs the, the household, if you like. But she does it in such a, a competent way, in such a skillful way, and she has knowledge that you wouldn't necessarily think she has, that, you know, you know she's a well-rounded character. She's not just some sort of skivvy that's doing this, that, and the other, and gets treated badly. She doesn't. In fact, she's in charge. <laughs> you know, underneath it all, she's actually in charge, despite what Matt, who's the chieftain of the robbers, actually believes. He's a bit more blustery. He's a bit more, you know, gun-ho, and he's obviously going out there and, and robbing people, and isn't he marvellous, and he's all about that. But he is very loving to Ronya as well. So that's what I like about this, that every character is very well-rounded. And, the, and again, the, the friendships of their family dynamic are tested. So she starts to rebel because obviously she doesn't really like this robber situation. And then when, I guess there's a little bit of a plot spoiler, when she tells Matt that you know she's friends with the rival's son, he's livid and they fall out. So she consequently runs off and they, they, you know, she goes, well, I'm going to live in the woods. So again, there's that testing, allowing your children to do what they need to do to actually be the people that they need to be and discover and learn. That's the biggest thing. And to, to give them space to be kids, because, you know, growing up can be quite a traumatic situation. 
And so I love that. And there's ultimately, you know, you, you feel all of her frustration, you feel all of her anger and all of her happy times as well. There's some beautiful moments where she's in the woods, she's discovering the lake for the first time. That's a beautiful scene. There's low-level fantasy that runs through all of this. There's, it, ma it mainly happens with the creatures. So there's flying harpies that are very evil. They're quite nasty and vicious. You've got trolls, you've got little gnome folk, you've got various different uh, aspects of the creatures within the woods. So consequently, the, the fantasy is very low-level. Overall, absolutely loved it. Thought it was amazing. It has that feel of a classic. No wonder it's been in print and been translated to so, so many different countries. And it, 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 if I was, you know, 10 or 11 reading this, I'd love it because it, it, it really does represent what it's like being a kid and your relationships with your parents. And ultimately, deep down, hopefully you know that they love you, but you're testing them. You want to be independent. You think you know better. I love all the characterization, very well-rounded characters. The storylines are beautiful. They're very, sl not slow, but they're, they're kind of there, they're gentle, but they lead you in and they're still intriguing. And there's unexpected twists as well, which I like. And it's not afraid to get a bit dark. You know, with the harpies, it gets quite dark and quite gritty. So that's nice as well. So, so this shows that there is a tough side to life as well. It's not all just happiness and you know, romping around, playing around in the fields. And I love all the themes that, that are there. And ultimately, this father-daughter relationship that they have is beautiful because there's a misunderstanding that goes on. And I think that can happen quite a lot between one generation to the next generation and vice versa. And so throughout the situations, they discover more and more about each other. And then, you know, hopefully, you know, well, there is this rec reconciliation, but it doesn't come easy. It comes through negotiation. And that's what I like about this, the way that they treat Ronya and as, as well as run your understanding about what it's like to be a parent so they can sort of see both sides of the coin. So it's very beautifully written, very good quality writing. As I say, it really feels like a classic. Totally love it. If you have any children of that sort of age, of say nine upwards, they would love it. And that is Ronya, the robber's daughter. <laughs> Ronya, the robber's daughter. There have been a few adaptations of this. One was a film, which I believe was live action about 1985. I'd love to see that. That'd be interesting to see how they've adapted it. And Netflix also have shown recently, it's up on Netflix by Studio Ghibli. Um, they have done an animation of it and I did watch it and I'm gonna be doing a review of that. So I don't wanna spoil exactly what I thought about how they did adapt it and what a job they did with it. So yes, so obviously if something gets adapted, there's enough people out there that think, yeah, this is worth adapting. And I would totally recommend reading this. As I say, it's got that classic feel like Lion, the Witch in the Wardrobe, that kind of feel to it. So it is a big thumbs up here from the Bottled Imp. So if you're going to watch this or read this, if you know, this would be a great present if you're a father. Get this for your son or daughter. Yeah, it's not even though it's about a female character. Boys will love this as well because she's very feisty, she's intelligent, she knows what's what. Um, but again, like, a, like us all, we're kind of discovering who we are, so she's not perfect like any of us. Anyway, that's all we have time for. Remember to keep it unreal, especially if you're a robber's daughter.